We'll go now to um, Ms. Uh, Northam. Thank you. Thank you to the committee uh, for inviting me to be here today and uh, for taking your summer to work on this uh, important and challenging issue. I'm the campaign lead for electoral reform at an organization called Lead Now. We represent hundreds of thousands of Canadians from coast to coast to coast, and about 19,000 of our members live in one of your ridings. Um, what our members have in common is that they want Canada to have a fair economy, a safe climate, and an open democracy. So Lead Now is a fundamentally member-driven organization which is to say that we always start from what our community thinks is important, and then we work to bring their voices to the people with the power to make an impact on those issues. So I'm here today to do just that. I'm not speaking on, on behalf of myself, but I'm speaking on behalf of thousands of people who think it's absolutely vital that Canada replace our broken first-past-the-post voting system with some form of proportional representation. So to put together this presentation, we surveyed our community to make sure that we were representing them accurately, and nearly 10,000 people responded uh, within 48 hours to our call out for input, and they wanted us to share um, some key messages with you today. So I wanted to start uh, by reminding us all what it is that we're solving for. So the Lead Now community strongly believes that our first-past-the-post voting system is broken. It does not allow people to adequately and fairly express their preferences, and that in turn takes away power and choice from the voter. It makes elections a game of riding by riding math and strategy. This is an issue that impacts our relationship to democracy. It impacts one of our most basic rights as Canadian citizens, and it shapes our relationship to our elected officials. It makes it difficult for people to accurately and fairly express what they really want at election time. So the fact that millions of people at each and every election cannot effectively exercise that right is not something to be taken lightly. It's not an unfortunate side effect, and it's something that affected 9 million people in the last election. Canada is quite simply behind the times when it comes to having a modern voting system. We're one of the only OECD countries that still uses first-past-the-post, and we are the only OECD, OECD country that uses it at all three levels of government. We are outliers and we're using a fundamentally unfair and unjust way to run elections and that needs to change. So a little, a little context now. Um, Lead Now's involvement in democratic reform didn't start with uh, the election of this new government. We've been working hard to improve Canadian democracy since our founding in 2011. Over the years, we've held hundreds of events and meetings and consultations uh, where the topic of electoral reform has come up time and again. We've made thousands of phone calls, we've knocked on thousands of doors, and we've stood in the snow and canvassed until our pens froze. And uh, we were all waiting for this moment where we would have an opportunity to change. Our campaign for proportional representation is called Vote Better, and so far over 24,000 people have signed on in support. About a third of those people have come from volunteers going to festivals, going out to street corners, um, talking to people on their doorsteps, and listening to their stories of why we need a fairer voting system. So the reason what we've done this is simple. Our community believes, as I know everyone in this room also agrees, that having an open and transparent democracy is absolutely foundational to being able to move forward and address the really big pressing issues of our time. We need a democracy that's fair, inclusive, and collaborative. And some of you might be aware that we have in the past also run a strategic voting campaign, and the election before that, we advocated for inter-party cooperation. Uh, we did so because our community was frustrated by the distorted results produced by First Past the Post. Our preference would be that people don't have to work around First Past the Post's pitfalls in order to express what they want. Strategic voting, as you know, happens when voters vote for uh, who they think they can win instead of who they might truly want. And it happens when people are afraid to vote for their first choice lest it split the vote and empower their least favorite choice. Canadians have been doing it for a long time. And without good local information, they're often guessing at what the most strategic choice actually is. And expressing your true preferences and seeing that preference reflected in an outcome should not require strategy or access to polling information. So we believe that this frustration with First Past the Post is commonly felt. I personally have spent a lot of time going door to door for both our election campaign and this campaign um, in various ridings around Ontario, although my colleagues um, have done so in other provinces in Manitoba, in BC, um, in the Maritimes. And I uh, did not encounter very many people who were unfamiliar with the tough choices that First Past the Post uh, forces us to make. So should they vote with their hearts and accept that it may split the vote in their riding? Uh, should they vote for the candidate they think is most likely to win? Or should they just not bother to vote at all because the conclusion seems foregone? 
And we know that first past the post can lead to big changes in the power structure of parliament, even when the popular vote doesn't change very much. So you see situations where parties increase their share of the popular vote only moderately, a couple percentage points, but actually make huge gains in seat count due to how those votes are concentrated in key ridings. So this can have the impact of propelling parties into majority governments without a majority of the vote, as we know, uh, which we know can also give a party a tremendous amount of power. It also means that voters in those key swing ridings may get more attention than voters in the safe ridings. And these are symptoms of a broken voting system in action. So democracy is not a finished product, but something that we have to constantly refine. And fortunately, one of the things we have going for us uh, here in Canada is that we're a country full of people who really believe in democracy. And uh, Lead Now is, full of, of a, is a community full of those people, and uh, this room is full of such people. So the question then becomes, what's the next step? So when asked this question, the Lead Now community overwhelmingly told us they want to see PR replace first past the post. Uh, so 85% of them said that was their preference uh, because it's the only way to address uh, the fundamental flaws with first past the post. And we prepared a brief, which I don't believe you have in front of you today, but you will have shortly, um, which has more detailed reasons on why we prefer PR. Um, and I believe many of the other experts that have been before this panel have already summarized many of PR's benefits. Um, but we'll just summarize a couple of the things that we think are most important. Firstly, it's just fundamentally more fair. First past the post is what's known as a winner-take-all system. It gives the people who did not vote for the winner uh, no voice. It also creates wild distortions in seat count to the point where governments often receive majorities without a majority of the popular vote. Whereas PR would make every vote count, um, give voters greater choice uh, without having to resort to strategic voting. And whether you're a conservative in downtown Toronto or an NDP voter in rural Manitoba, you do deserve to have your voice heard. Um, secondly, it is more inclusive, and um, you know we have seen some evidence that it is more diverse. Although I appreciated Professor uh, Thomas's comments on that today, um, you know we feel that it would help to prevent parties from focusing only on the regions of the country which are seen as winnable, and instead produce policy that considers the entire country. And thirdly, it's collaborative. It would make parties, uh, or make sorry, make politics less of a zero-sum game and force parties to work together across party lines to address those big issues. Um, our community has told us that they're tired of adversarial politics and they want governments to take the time to compromise and craft solutions that will stand the test of time, rather than spending their time undoing or amending previous policy decisions by previous uh, governments. So I would just end by um, relaying our appreciation and thanks um, of our community for taking on this issue. Uh, as I said earlier, I believe we all share common values of appreciation for democracy and we want to do what we can to be more inclusive of everyone. We know that changing our electoral system is a big step. You've been hearing a lot of different arguments over the last week or a couple weeks and you will be hearing more as you go out on the road. And uh, the Lead Now community just believes that this is a time to be bold. This process has opened an amazing window of opportunity uh, to leave a lasting legacy and give Canada an improved electoral system. The truth is that we lag behind the rest of the world in using an unsophisticated voting system to try to represent a population that is growing increasingly more diverse. And it isn't meeting the challenges of representing everyone's voice. And that has impacts on real people. So it's not just an abstract question of which system is best, but a question of whether we want to be including, committed to ensuring that everyone is included in our democracy. And there is clear evidence that PR is the best way to rectify that problem. So I just wanted to end with a quote from one of our community members in Toronto um, who wanted us to share this message with you. Political systems evolve. Let us not assume or be lulled into the belief that our system is a static and finished or done project. Rather, let us always and continually find ways, sometimes small or sometimes major, to better manifest democracy and representation. Let us never fear new ideas. Our current system has shown its flaws and it would be irresponsible not to try something new now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 